Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. The boys are back in town, the boys are back in town. Hello, welcome back to another Adam and Ro show. Yes, who'd have believed it? Who'd have thunk it? Two in two weeks. This is us back for good now. So thank you for all the love that you showed us last week. And we're going to read some of the comments in a minute. But Ro, wasn't that wasn't that a welcome back that we got? Oh, absolutely. Um, thank you for everybody, you know, not only tuning in, but leaving the comments. You know, I, I was wondering how Adam and I would kind of get back on our feet, but it's like we didn't lose any ground. So yeah. but thank you. Uh, absolutely and it, it felt quite natural talking to you because we hadn't talked in about a month or two either so it was really good just to get back straight into the groove and i feel like uh we're never away uh but yeah really really honestly really appreciate it and, and the other thing that we really appreciate is the fact that last week we weren't glowing about the product you know and 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 i think you know this this channel has always been about positivity and impact but i think you know to be positive and never throw any negatives out there makes you a bit well disingenuous maybe that's the right word i don't know so i i think sometimes we do need to have that balance about things that we like and we don't like uh you know but we love impact that's the main the bottom line it's the only wrestling i watch uh, so, you know, we'll always be pro-impact, but sometimes, you know, there are going to be things that, that we're not fans of, you know. So so bear with us if we do moan a little bit. It's not our usual MO, but uh, even though we did last week a bit more than we usually would, you know, the response from you guys, uh, it brought a tear, it would bring a tear to a glass eye, put it that way. It was it was wonderful. So thank you very much for that. Now, if this is your first time stopping by our show and you didn't listen to last week's or the, what we used to do, then make sure you do hit the subscribe to the Impact Lounge. You know, this, this is supposed to be a, a place where you know, we talk about the current news, the current things going on, those the, the, all those kind of things, you know, uh, tra- Carl and Trent tend to do the, the review, although they have been pumping out some other content as well. Uh, and, and we heard this week, breaking news, uh, for those who don't know, but BQ has resurfaced. Just uh, He was obviously in the undead realm, I reckon. We must have found him down there because he's resurfaced on Twitter and he says he's going to be around for the the, the pay-per-view uh, prediction show. So... Uh, If you haven't heard BQ, he's the guy who started this channel all those years ago. How long ago was it, Ro? Do you know? Uh, 2016. It originally was the King of the Mountain podcast. And then I forgot when he did the name change. But then it became the the Impact Lounge. So he was one of the rare few. And um, and that's how I had originally met him because he was one of the rare few pods that were covering impact like solely impact well tna at that time because you also had hillcast as well so yeah since 2016 so just going back uh, to that yes yeah, so he's going to be back doing uh, a weekly show i think as well so you're going to get more and more content as we go through talking of which i did a quick interview of rosemary last week uh nothing groundbreaking in there but it was fun it's always very difficult when they when uh, wrestlers stay in character but if you get a chance check that out it should be going up hopefully it'll be up by the time you, you hear this review if it's not then it'll be up uh, a couple of days later but uh yeah very short interview that only a 10 15 minute job a uh, bit of fun but yeah let us know what you think as well so um going back to to the the comments from last week because we always start off with the comments and the trivia question um i'm gonna start with the trivia question there was only one person who got even close and, and that was one of the guys who long time listener of the show richard cartledge so well done richard uh, he said the trivia answers they both debuted during tours of the uk well more specifically they actually debuted in glasgow uh, and i was at both of those shows so that's the reason why i remember it um mvp came in as the secret investor from memory uh and he was um i'll, I'll come back to that in a second and then drew galloway uh came in and made a save i think uh he attacked loki with a metal bar from memory and ripped his ear open can you remember that row yeah I, I didn't know remember it was the ear. i know he had busted him open and like he he was pissed i mean i would be too but i didn't understand what had occurred where it uh um he was bleeding and then that was a thing Yep. So, so that they both happen in Glasgow. So there you go. That's uh, in Scotland for for those who don't know. So well done to Richard Cartledge and and thank you for the comments. So all the really kind comments. Richard was there. Chris Steele, Critical Sting, William Smith, who's still loving Impact pay per views. Uh, too many to read. Lee Poulton, Colby Cooper. 
you know, all all the old house, Hakeem Fullerton, you know, they're all there. So if I haven't read your name, it's not because I don't love you. We really do love you. But um, yeah, thank you very much for, for the welcome. So I, I'm going to set this week's trivia question again. Sorry, bro, if you had one. But it was when, <laughs> no worries. when I was thinking about the answer to this one, when MVP came in to the show, I don't know if you remember who flanked him. And this is not the trivia question, but who who was also in his entourage when he debuted. Could you remember? It was uh, Kenny King, because um, it, wait, wait, wasn't it the Beatdown Clan? No, 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 it wasn't. It was, he actually came in with uh, the American Wolves. The Wolves were either side of him when he came in. They were his, like, oh, when well, he I, I, I didn't even I didn't even remember that, because I remembered, I think during that time, that was like the Destination America era, right? Yeah, it would have been, yeah. So Yeah, I, I remember him with uh, Kenny King and, uh, and then Lashley and stuff. So you're talking about when he initially debuted, he had came came uh, with the, uh, the Wolves? That's right. They were kind you, – you know, you've seen all these backstage things, you know, people getting out of cars. You didn't know who it was going to be. Uh, but you kept on seeing the Wolves were the ones, you know, who were kind of opening the car. So anyway, my question is about the Wolves or the American Wolves. I can't remember if they were called the American Wolves or not, or whether they were just the Wolves. Um, but anyway, my question about them, and Ro, free frilled to tell me, you know, after the show whether you know the answer. Well, you can tell me if you know the answer. You can tell me the answer if you know it. Um, is what was unusual about the Wolves' first tag team championship? There you go. Um, so that's the question. What was unusual about um, the tag team win for the, when they won the titles the first time? So there you go. That's the question. Do you know the answer? Uh, I might, but I just wanted to add in a tidbit. And it's crazy how sometimes whether, um, you know, backstage transgressions or injuries can I really change the direction of people. Because when you think about it, had MVP not got hurt, Lashley, we might, Lashley might have never been checked. Well, I'm sure down the road he would have got it, but Lashley really won the title because MVP, MVP got injured. Because uh, I think during that time they were really what well, it was looking like that was in the cards that MVP was going to defeat uh, Eric Young for the TNA title. So um, it's just crazy to see, you know, had he not got hurt, what would have happened. I can't actually remember that. Um, that would be interesting if anyone could give us some background on that. Because I, I, I remember MVP, that eventually he left uh, because of the Hernandez situation, wasn't it? That he recommended Hernandez come in for memory from, and he was still under contract to Lucha Underground. So we had this strange situation where they weren't allowed to show Hernandez's face on impact. Can you remember? Oh, well, that was one hell of a screw up. But can you remember that? I I remember some of this stuff. I um I don't remember everything from detail to detail because he originally I think there was a point too where he was kind of a somewhat authority figure and then he ended up wrestling too. But uh, I I just remember once he got injured, I think that's just kind of like we seen. I don't want to say the beginning of the end, but that kind of messed things up because then they kind of just went all in on Lashley and then Lashley ended up feuding with them. And uh, um, but I do remember the Hernandez situation. So I, it's fuzzy, but I remember that being a big deal. And then he ended up coming back years later. He did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the, the funny thing is about MVP is this is a guy who who had all the athletic ability. He was good on the mic, but to me, he he never really felt like a top guy to me. I don't know what it was. But anyway, I'm going to come back to top guys in a second because we're going to pick out one comment from um, the ones that were left last week. And there was a fantastic, uh, well, two comments from King, I want to say Nerd, Neard. I don't know. Let us know how you pronounce it, please, King. Uh, so King Nerd left us two replies with five bullet points. So I'm just going to read through them and we can answer them one by one just to get your take. We did touch on this last week, but uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, you know, touch on one or two of them. So um, he's he's saying that he's actually a fan of, of Madison Rain and that uh, he's looking for her to come back and, and actually be strong. So, I mean, I know we touched on it last week, but... Um, what you know, he, he's saying that. Well, I'll read it out. I don't agree with the sentiment on Madison Rae. She accomplished a lot in the company, even though she's not on the same tier as Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, and even potentially Rosemary. She beat Tyre, who wasn't really doing anything at the time, anyways, and Tessa twice, who was too busy arguing the ref uh, to build up her further to lose to the heel champion Sue Young. What they done with Sue Young afterwards has been odd, but the reasoning behind Maddie's latest run makes sense. Maddie made me uh, maybe in the title scene, but I don't see her beating Tyre necessarily. Now I agree that I don't see her winning, but she should be nowhere near that title run. So, uh, King, we love the comments, 
And, you know, sometimes Ro and I will agree with you, somebody won't. This one, I can't agree with you. I think she has to stay nowhere near that title. Um, you know, I would much rather see her in, in a feud with someone like Kiera Hogan to build her up than, than anywhere near that title. Yeah, that's the thing. And just to kind of touch on what you said earlier, like, you know, we are pro impact and, you know, I love impact. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like every single thing they produce. That doesn't make me less of a fan. And, you know, I see sometimes people like when I had reviewed the show on the clock cleaners yesterday or this past weekend, I'm sorry. And, you know, a lot of people are saying you're so negative and stuff like, hey, we're going to have different you know, opinions. That's fine. You know, I'm never going to attack somebody like you actually like that. Like, if you feel that way, fine. Just like King Nerd, he feels that Madison Rain, you know, she's a great addition. I mean, I disagree, but that's OK. And my thing with her, I just think at this point we talk about with impact week in and week out about them needing to develop stars, let alone homegrowns and not relying on established names from this company or that company are bringing people back from you know the old tna history and trying to thrust them into those roles i really think with madison rain the role that she should be used is to help elevate some of these other people who you know are probably flout you know flattering at this time or if you want to bring in new knockouts just because she has that name cachet now with that said um, I think given when you look at the division and there's pro- probably not a whole lot of people right now that are kind of strong contenders. I mean, it would have shocked me if she's thrusted in the title picture. Sure. I mean, no, I wouldn't at all. I mean, I don't think she'll beat Taya. I think she might um, face whoever's the champion after Taya. But um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on that, Adam. I think she should... I'm not going to say so much nowhere near, but she shouldn't be first in line. She should get a title match here and there to help put over who the champion is. But outside of that, I mean, she shouldn't be prominently featured. But that's just my opinion. Okay, so point two. Uh, I'm all for EC3 returning to Impact, slap the belt on Cage, give him some title defenses, then bring back EC3 to steal the belt for him. Now, I like that idea. I do like that idea. Um, I, I think EC3 could quite easily slot back into the main event. The only thing I would say about it is that you've got someone in that position in. Eli Drake could also do that, you know, and take the title off Cage. Killer Cross could, all these kind of things. So, um, but if EC3 is going to come back, yeah, I would have absolutely no problem with him going back right at the top. Because let's face it, he tread water for the last six months of his contract. He wasn't in the title scenes. So I think it would freshen it up. And, and he's certainly got the chops to carry a feud with uh, Cage. And just think of the stuff that he would most probably do. You know, he's a funny guy in the same way Ken Anderson was. And they can light up a feud against someone who hasn't got much personality. I mean, you look at EC3 versus Lashley. He made it interesting. You look at Ken Anderson versus uh, Jeff Hardy. He made it interesting. You know, and I think that, that EC3 coming back could could do something for cage so cage is great and you know johnny night johnny nitro because i'm calling him johnny nitro now johnny uh impact i can't think of his bloody name then uh johnny (laughs) mundo impact um uh, he's okay but if they put the bet on cage he hasn't got much personality either and that is a problem killer cross has he's got it in buckets but cage hasn't actually got that personality as such so i think you do need someone to carry him um which, which is why this that this feud at the moment is being carried by the the bit players, the killer cross, you know, all the all these kind of people. So yeah, EC three, I'd welcome him back, and I'd I could see him going straight into the main event scene, especially if they lose Eli. Well, okay, th- my, here's my my thing is like this: it's not so much I have a problem with him coming back, but thrusting him back into the picture. I just want to know, are we going to be okay with people leaving? And look, I know with him, he fulfilled his contractual obligations. You can argue with the new regime on board. Maybe they weren't fond of him. And like I said, him phoning it in, that's what I kind of really had a problem with. But okay, whatever, all that. But are we going to be okay with if somebody, um, you know, do does everything they can in Impact, of course, right? WWE or some other company comes calling they go over there, they don't make it over there for whatever reason, and then they want to come back to Impact and they thrust it back 
in into you know a prominent role are we going to be okay with that so if Ali just say for example and they chose not to resign Ali mind you she goes to AEW they don't use her well she uh you know Impact wants to bring her back and they put her at the top of the division are we going to be okay are we going to be okay with that I mean if people are okay with that then you know fine and stuff I just kind of think if I'm a talent on there and I'm I'm trying to break through Okay, I'm trying to get the TV time. I'm trying to get this opportunity. I see this person leave the co- depart the company to go chase, you know, something elsewhere, which is fine. Nobody's criticizing that. Only for them to come back and still be ahead of me. That's not right. And I think things like that can bring bad morale to a company. I I, I think that some people, fair enough, like Ali. I think it's a, it's a different situation in that if Ali came back, you know, she was never the figurehead of a company. EC3 feels like a impact tna whatever you want to call it a you know a homegrown character that belongs where he is just the same as when austin aries came back ali she never got to that level i know she was well, impact okay. champion twice but she never so uh, you know if, if i'm if, if i'm a really great actor and i'm on a tv show yeah uh, and i'm the main character i'm not being funny if they recruit bruce willis to come in and star with me i know who's going to get top billing you know you accept that and I've got a yeah, but yeah. So no, I, I I disagree with you on that one. Well, well, it's funny that you pointed that out. And Austin Aries is a perfect example. I forgot how he had left Impact before, but it's a fact that where you go to, they don't use you to the same capacity. And like I said, once again, you know, a lot of that has to do with you built, you know, you built your name elsewhere. He was competing on what the pre-show for the the cruiserweight show that they have, mm-hmm. only to come back to Impact and win the title once he comes back his first night. All I'm just saying is like this. Like, if if that's how it's going to be, fine, but we can't get mad when some of these people get unhappy and leave and, you know, some of their criticism is valid criticism. Because if it, that were me, I would be pissed off, especially if I'm not getting a shot. This person leaves, they come back and they get, you know, get the shot, especially if they go out in a fashion that's not, you know, you know how like a lot of times people will go out bashing and i know ec3 didn't go out that way so i'm 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 i think like my problem with him is more of just his attitude towards the end but it's just if he's gonna come back i at least want to see him work his way up to that point but i mean we can agree to disagree yeah yeah absolutely but the one thing i'll say about the austin Aries thing by the way is that he it was the way he won it he came back in and he won it cleanly in in minutes you know which did such a disservice to Eli. That's the reason. Uh, and I'm not saying that they couldn't do something like that with EC3, but it just didn't sit right because Eli never had a really good feud. So uh, anyway, uh, you're right. We can agree to disagree. I don't have a problem as long as they do it right. Okay. Uh, next next point from King Nerd. Thank you, by the way, King Nerd. As you can see, this has generated some discussion here. Uh, it's because <laughs> it's been a slow news week as well, so this helps. Uh, I think uh, Willie, talking about Willie Mac, is in the same boat as Kiara Hogan. He's a supporting character, but I don't think it'll last. Once they really invest time on the Mac, then we can re- re-evaluate him. Um, they're taking their time with the two of them. Uh-uh. I disagree on that one. Willie Mac is never, ever going to be a top star. Brilliant in the ring for a guy his size. He just doesn't have it. He just doesn't have it, in my opinion. And I'm sorry to say that, because I'm sure he's genuinely a nice guy. At some point, I'll most probably end up interviewing him and tell him I think he's great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, great wrestler. He might, as I said, he might be a top guy. But he, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't scream like a star to me. You know, I think it's hard to kind of pinpoint who can thrive and who can, because I really think Ethan Page could be a star. Um, There's just really nothing that kind of catapults a person from, you know, just debuting to the main event picture. That's why I uh, wonder why, and I don't know, maybe it's in the cards, but why they don't do more tournaments, you know, to crown a number one contendership or, you know, some type of gauntlet run, something like that. Like a lot of times when you do things like that, you know, you're, building multiple people at once but uh um there's really nothing like in like you had touched on it with brian cage once he wins the title okay once he's done facing johnny because you know they're probably going to get a rematch who's next he's going to essentially be facing probably facing the same people he faced leading up to his quest so you're talking about a killer cross and moose and i i just think that's the thing we don't have enough people where when we're crowning some of these champions there's enough people for them to work with Okay, um, I'm going to leave number four because he's saying I really doubt Jordan is going to beat Tyre. Uh, I haven't seen this week's impact. Was that this week or is that sort of come? Uh, yeah, it was this past past week's episode. So did she win? 
Uh, the match was, uh, thrown, I think, was it thrown out? Uh, there was a no contest. So we might have another one there. We don't know. But anyway. Uh, it ain't no might. We are. <laughs> oh, we have another one. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but honestly, Ali's departure could open the door for a tournament for the KS title. Because I don't know where all these women go from here. Well, I think uh, once Tessa's finished with um, uh, Gail Kim, I think she'll be back in the title picture. I think they've managed Tessa really well. Uh, we won't dwell too long on that because we're going to talk about the Undead Realm in a minute. Um, number five, if Eli, oh, K- King Nerd, has been hanging out with the rascals. I, I tell you, he's been smoking the crack pipe on this one. Eli is mid-card. Oh, I'm sorry, King Nerd. You, you had me You had me at hello originally, but, but Eli mid-card. Come on, man. He's never mid-card. He is the real deal. What do you reckon on that? Well, it's opinion. I mean, if he feels that way, I mean, I don't, I don't believe so. But if that's how he feels, that's how he feels. I mean, like we say on this show, we can agree to disagree. Like, with all due respect, if you think Jordan Grace isn't winning, beating Tyre for the title, um, I don't, I don't know what the cliche is, but yeah, I'll use that cliche. But to each his own. Um, with Eli, I, I think for some and i've I've seen some people feel this way they feel like his character if it was put on obviously like say wwe it wouldn't uh, go over well so it's kind of like a big fish in a small pond that may that may be true but in impact i think he is big time but just like many people it's all how you position people and i think with eli eli has all the tools he kind of is more of a throwback wrestler given you know you look at the climate of wrestling now where everything is you know work rate and spot heavy and he's more he strikes me as the type more that wants to tell the story and he's all about character development so i think with that for some people some people aren't fond of that so just to sum it all up i i think he is big time but obviously management doesn't see that so i mean i guess management sees him as a mid card but i'd have to disagree you take eli drake now or in the last couple of years and you transport him back to the attitude era Put him in the middle of Rock, Austin, uh, Angle, all these people. He would not look out of place. He would not look out of place. He would hold his own. Uh, and that's how highly I rate him at the moment. And I know management don't, and they've given him absolute dross for the last two years. But the guy in the right environment would absolutely thrive. And it's a shame that we never had a real EC3 Eli Drake feud for the title. Because that's something that... Would have been absolute that 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 could have been impacts, uh, Rock and Austin. I uh, yeah, I think we talked about that. That's and I that's what I just find so frustrating. I feel they missed they missed the ball. They dropped the ball on so many different things, and then end up relying on having to go grab on Alberto or Austin Aries. Like I really thought those were the two that you could have really built a company around for the next couple of years because they were like, you know, of the same status. I even thought when Eli was champion, I thought EC3 was going to be the person that ends up taking it from him. And then we kind of get some long drawn out feud, but we saw with EC3, they, they dissed him. And we see this with a lot of people. And I, I think what, what happens is when, and I, I know you wanted to touch on this. And I apologize for not reminding you last week, but when the management has a vision of a certain individual, it's, it's just, it's just that. So anyone else who comes in between that, you know, they try to make sure to distance them away just to kind of clear the path for the person they have the vision on. But, uh, um, yeah, it, it's just so unfortunate. And I just kind of wonder, like, I find myself, I said, you know, where could Eli go where he could right away be a top guy? And the only place I think I could see that happening just – and I, I don't keep up with it too much, but I just – I'm just kind of just – guessing i really think if he went to ring of honor he could be the be on the top of the card you know mixing it up with jay lethal i think he's still champion over there but i really think ring of honor would make him the guy if i was going to make a prediction i reckon he's going to go to aew if he leaves impact i don't think he'll go to wwe and to be honest with you that kind of excites me him going to aew i mean a program between him and someone like jericho i think would be good i think it'd be good and it would put him over as the top guy because let's face it whoever jericho feuds with Okay, they might quickly put the title on him just so that, you know, it grabs headlines. But I think anyone, uh, you know, any booking really with Jericho, he's going to be putting talent over. I think he's oh, going yeah. to stage that career. Uh, and yeah. I think that if you put Eli Drake over, as, as you know, in their first major pay-per-view, then I think that's that, that would work. But anyway, who knows? Let us know what you all think about Eli Drake. 
do you agree with King Nerd that he's a, a mid carder, or are you do you think like me that he could have been he could have been you know in that Rock Austin kind of mix if he'd have been at the right time in the right place? And secondly, I want to I really want to hear what everyone's thoughts are on Willie Mac. That that's the one thing I want you all to take away from today and talk about is Willie Mac. Do you, does anyone see something that I'm not seeing here? Can can someone change my mind on this guy because he's good in the ring? I'll give you that. But can anyone tell me anything that, that's going to change my mind that he has got that personality he can make it? Because I, I can't see it. Anyway. Right. Anyway, that's the, the, the comments. And King Nerd, you know, I, okay, I might have taken the, uh, the piss a little bit there about uh, being in the Rascals room. We loved your comment. A really good uh, amount of debate that you generated there. Keep coming back, uh, even if you are <laughs> crazy <laughs> in some of your thoughts. But, hey, everyone's got an opinion, eh? Everyone's got an opinion. So... Uh, Ro, we're going to get on to the news. There isn't that much news, but I want to talk about the Undead Realm in a minute. But before I do that, the one bit of news that did come out is that uh, Tyre Valkyrie um, basically was in a AAA event, I think it was. Was it a AAA event? Um, and uh, she was effectively in a bit of a botched moonsault on her, and she's basically been beaten up on the old face there. So she's been... Um, uh, smacked about a little bit but the good news is that she's all okay and it was an accident and those kind of things did you see the pictures yeah you know and luckily it wasn't worse than that i actually seen you know the after and then what actually made it occur i noticed with her moonsault and i i worry about this for a lot of people when they're doing the high flying moves she gets more elevation than she does distance so i think sometimes when she goes up to do it it's like I don't want to say like she's standing in one place, but she's not. She doesn't jump further, f- far away enough from the uh, uh, turnbuckle. So and look, I know you know accidents in, in wrestling happen and stuff, but that's always my concern. But luckily, it's nothing worse than that, and I'm sure she'll be fine by the time uh, we see her at uh, Rebellion. Yeah. So, um, was there anything else in the news this week? I don't think there really was. You, you're going to come up with something about. Meltzer. Well, let's talk about it first. We'll start for that. Apparently, you were telling me before the show tonight that uh, Meltzer said something positive about Impact. Yeah, I seen on Twitter. I didn't read it because you know what I, you know I, I think he kind of flip flops and stuff. So, and I'm one of these people. I don't need someone else's opinion to kind of. Oh, okay, me. That's my validation. You know, I watch for myself and formulate my own. But I guess. Yeah, um, and maybe I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he was just saying it was uh, the uh, impacts put on some better product than uh, SmackDown and Raw. I don't know. Like I said, I didn't. I just kind of glimpsed at it. And just like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I thought the n- news you were going to cover, though. I don't. I guess it's not a big, big deal. But uh, Alicia Tout leaving the company. Oh yeah, yeah. So, sorry, I, I did miss that. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. Absolutely, she did leave it. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, we do. I don't know if she's going on to do anything more wrestling related. She revealed what she's doing, but yeah, I did read that. I forgot to mention it. I don't think it's a big loss. Although, well, no, I say I don't think it's a big loss. Let's face it, that the backstage interviewers are fine, you know, but they are all pretty interchangeable. She was good. She was really good, but you know, it's not going to really affect the product, is it? But I, I wish her well. Yeah, no, you know, I mean, we're sure. Well, I mean, who knows? I, I think it's rumored that she might be going to AEW because she was uh, talking about, you know, big things are in store and, you know, whatever they, they say. And I, I always find it interesting. People who are departing, they always kind of run to Twitter and let it be known like, hey, I'm going, I'm ready for this next journey and da da da. Like, and I, I get it to be, to be enthusiastic about it, but, um, like a lot of times when you see that and then the next thing you know oh such and such is departed departed from the company um but yeah i mean we only seen her in canada um melissa has been doing a fine job and i'm i'm guessing keeping melissa around keeps brian cage not only around but happy so i mean there you go and they they have high ho- high i mean they're high on brian cage and obviously you want to keep them happy so boom yep just want to go back to the the Meltzer thing there, uh, because you know I joke about Meltzer all the time, saying that you know he changes his mind usually before the end of the sentence uh, to cover all bases. Uh, you know, if he was reporting about Alicia Tate uh, leaving, he most probably would have said she might be leaving. Unconfirmed sources said, but it's definite that she is going somewhere that she might change her mind and plans might change in the future. <laughs> you know, that, that's a typical Meltzer kind of reporting. So you know. I, I think the guy is a bit of a prick, 
uh, if I'm being honest, because he, he slated, you know, impact wrongly for years and years and years and years. Um, so the fact that he's praising them now, I don't, I don't really give two hoots. But it's interesting that he's changed his mind. And there are people who absolutely love the guy and, and listen to every word he says. But we were talking just before the show about how we can't have it both ways. You know, that you think that, you know, if we can't start holding him up now. Say, well, like even Meltzer says it's great. Uh, bearing in mind, we've, we've criticised him for so long. And, and it got me thinking when we were talking about this beforehand about other people that we criticize and we love and hate who are not specifically wrestlers but maybe people in the industry and you know i'm going to throw a couple of names at you here just to see Mm -hmm. i want to hear what you think of them and viewers listeners tell us the same as well what do you think of um for example vince russo i have no problem with him um i thought some of his booking was questionable but i mean I mean, he was, during the the times that he was a booker, I enjoyed whether it was WCW, um, some of that. I think he was around. For, I don't know if he was around for the Attitude and he, um, even uh, TNA. So no, no problem with him. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't stand listening to him talking, bro, uh, and things like that. He, he's a bit annoying, and he's and he's a bit of an idiot. I've, I've talked to him a few times offline, uh, never recorded interview, but. I, I don't particularly like him as a person, but I quite like his his theories about wrestling booking. And I do like a bit of shock storytelling and those kind of things. So so for me, I, I, I'm a big Russo fan, not as a person, but just, you know, his creative his creativity. Um, so for me, Russo gets a thumbs up. OK, next one. Uh, Jim Cornette. You know, I don't I, I hated him more as a character. Um and this stems back from when he, because I think he used to manage uh, Jerry um, a while a while back, and I always remember in the Royal Rumble he had to cost the late on Hearts elimination. So I think stemming from that, I didn't like him. Um, but outside of that, the mind, um, really, I don't know. I don't really have too much of an opinion. I think with him, just with the, a lot of these guys, their 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 mind, it worked for a time of wrestling that we're not at, in anymore. So while you can appreciate that, like a lot of some of their views that they share, because I know I think he's very critical on uh, Joey Ryan's whole shit uh, stuff. And uh, um, but no, overall, I don't really have too much of a problem with them. I'm sorry if I'm being repetitive with my answers. Okay. Well, here's the third and final one, and it's going to lead on to another question. But what do you think of Bischoff, Eric Bischoff? Whoa. OK. I thought he was he's fine. Until you give him free reign, I think in when he was in WWE, kind of having to run by Vince, he was all right. I thought with WCW, um, he was fine up until he started becoming a on-screen persona, and it seemed like he was kind of really getting free reign. And then even in in uh, um, TNA, I know a lot of people, you know blame him and Hogan for its demise but I thought during the time it was okay but you know then it's like too much Bischoff I think that's when I started to sour so he's all right in the beginning for me but then towards the end I kind of soured on him okay well I, 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 how do I tone this down because I was going to say I think he's a piece of shit but uh <laughs> maybe maybe that says it all in one sentence however uh, I'm going to say something quite controversial here. Well, not controversial, but something that people may not actually believe that I, I, I'm going to say. And especially after me criticizing King Neard earlier on <laughs> about his views on Eli Drake. But I actually quite enjoyed the Hogan Bischoff era in TNA. And I know people are going to be raising their eyebrows at that one. But let's not f- forget that Aces and Eights were during the, the Bischoff and Hogan era. And that was one of my all-time favorite storylines in wrestling. So although they brought in, you know, the nasty boys and, and some of the, you know, the, the outsiders, etc., and, and that was terrible. And they really took took the, the, the business down. Uh, and then he actually killed the company almost. Um, I enjoyed the era. Now, with regards to Bischoff, I think that he is a parasite on the wrestling business in that he turns up he takes what he can from it and doesn't care about the carnage that he leaves behind. Now, ultimately, we're all, we all should look out for ourselves. But the way that he does it repeatedly, I can't believe that people actually respect him. I really can't. 
Um, and let's not forget, he also gave us Garrett Bischoff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he is pure evil. There you go. Um, you know what I th- what I think too is with a lot of these some of these um, uh, personalities. See, I think as if, if you have somebody in place who's a businessman, like the one thing for as much as crap people give Vince McMahon on, like he's a he has a good mind and he's a businessman first. So I think with that, he's able to kind of like keep those folks in place. Whereas I think like with even with Dixie Carter, I think one of the biggest critiques on her is you know she was a fan she was a wrestling fan so you know if bischoff or hogan or some of these people who made their name in the you know 90s come knocking on your door you're like yeah yeah of course i want you on board and you know you don't want to tell them no or any idea that they have you yeah 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 and that ends up when you give them free reign then it's like they can do whatever they want and you you know you because you're a fan whereas if you're a business person like yo that's not good for business like no i'm not you know and you dismiss it and i think that's just what happens a lot because you see the difference between bischoff in you know wcw and tna versus when he was in wwe and stuff so i think that's just with a lot of some of these minds and stuff you got to have you know the person the owner or you know management you got to have business people in there not fans that are like oh i'm such a fan of your work you can do whatever because i think that's what ends up you know you end up putting the company in positions like tna was before i, I think you're right and, and that's where dixie fell down she put too much trust in in hogan and bischoff and and bischoff is just a, a carny you know he, he comes in and he, he sells you you know some magic potion some magic beans and, th- and promises you, you know you're going to get a beanstalk in the morning and you know he's just He's an ass, and he ruined the company. And the thing is, I actually don't think that Hogan's a bad person. You can talk all you want about. Oh, well, I'll wait there. I better backtrack on that because I've just realised what I've just said. Uh, <laughs> 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 I meant in a wrestling capacity. I'm not talking about his views on anything else. But I don't think he came in to to milk the company. I truly believe he came in to try and elevate it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. No, Furious, he, he, no, no, you're, you're wrong on that. Furiously backtracking he, he came, here. <laughs> he came in because he was going through that nasty divorce and he needed money. That's why he came. That's why he came in. Don't, don't, don't sugarcoat it for Hogan. He came in strictly, strictly for the money. Because I, I, I think, I think during that time, because because uh, uh, WWE didn't want him. Because with the whole, uh, I don't know if that was before that. I, I don't know, but it was something. He tried to go back to the E, and the E didn't want him. So then that's why he went to TNA. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, you, you're most probably right he needed the money, but I think that he most probably did put in an honest shift. You know, I certainly remember seeing him over here doing talk shows in the UK and those kind of things and doing the rounds, which, you know, you know he tried Bischoff, though. Uh, I, I, just, I said he's a parasite. Anyway, there, there's another thing for our viewers to, to comment on. You know, that that's I want to hear about Willie Mack. I want to hear about what your thoughts on the, the Bischoff-Hogan era were like. Because let's face it, I think that, 99% of people you ask, or certainly on the internet, slate the Hogan, uh, Hogan, the Hogan Bischoff era, don't they? You don't see much love for it out there. So I'm, I'm the one, I'm in the one percenters here on this one. Well, I, I'll say this, and this is probably <laughs> very unpopular. If I had to compare, like I probably enjoyed that era than I have this whole Don and Scott regime. Whoa! And I know that might be, un- <laughs> and I know that might be unpopular. That's fine, you know. But I'm just, I'm just, that's just me, you know. I, <laughs> I thought I was being controversial. <laughs> Never mind. You know, I'm just, I'm just being, just being honest. It's just like, and I'm not just saying it just everything. But if I just had to compare, because you know, I guess when I watched it during that time. It was more of the, and although I know some of the booking was questionable, to me it was more the backstage stuff. Like that, what was going on backstage was the biggest problem. Like it wasn't, from what I was watching, it wasn't affecting the product. You know, still getting you know pay per views and all this and that. You know, viewership was still great. Like everything was fine. It was more of just like the backstage stuff that was being leaked out, which to me made it look bad. Yeah, I think I think that's a fair comment. Right. Okay. We're, we're time is absolutely flying here so there's cu- one thing i wanted to just touch on was the undead realm before we move on to your final thought as well rose final thought you like jerry springer over there right okay we'll come, <laughs> on to that. come over there uh mayor of cincinnati um yeah so undead realm was this week and uh, as i said i haven't seen the show yet but i have seen bits of the undead realm which i've got to say um 
uh, it's the kind of stuff that I love. I, I love storytelling on a great canvas like this. Um, so I actually think it's a great way of writing out Ali. And, and besides, you said, what happens if Ali comes back later on? That would be amazing because uh, my favourite ever wrestling character and moment was ECW Zombie. Uh, which which was <laughs> if you've never seen this <laughs> go on youtube it and he was the honestly the nicest guy i interviewed him once and he's dead now a guy called tim arson but absolutely honestly genuinely one of my favorite all-time interviews ever he was lovely anyway but he, so yeah if ali comes back she'll have to be a uh, tna zombie or something like that so that would be good uh, I, i'd pay to see that so yeah um However, I, I thought it was a great writer writer out. I love the idea behind it. I love the fact that uh, the Taskmaster was there uh, as, as the, the the ultimate evil. But the thing I didn't like about it, and I've, I haven't talked about this for a while, but I used to talk about it a lot. And, you know, the same I have recurring themes of, and he can't wrestle, all these kind of things. But the production values seem very shoddy. It seemed like a high school production you know of someone editing it and and those kind of things and it could have been brilliant they could have made it more cinematic but it just felt like a real director video 80s horror film to me you know for me i i don't like i never liked when lucha underground did these type of segments so it was kind of the same thing however i give them credit where i give impact credit is this was a creative way to write someone off because i think we're so conditioned in wrestling to, you know, when we know somebody's leaving, you know, they jobbed on the way out or a loser leaves town or it's something like that. So you give them credit for it. Um, yeah, if she were to come back, I mean, I'm I'm sure folks will forget because remember, Madison came back after being buried by Sue Young. So, I mean, it, you know, it's wrestling. People understand it was just a way to write it off. So, um, so I give them credit for doing, you know, thinking outside the box and literally killing her character off. But, you know, like I said, I, I didn't like it when Lucha Underground did it. So, I mean, it's kind of same thing for me. <laughs> it is quite brutal, mind, isn't it? It's certainly not <laughs> PG friendly, is it, for the kids? Uh, PG thirteen. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, interesting. The only thing it could have been better is if the the guys who kidnapped Samoa Joe would have taken Ali off and we never saw her again. That would have been fun as well. Anyway, that, that's made my fantasy booking. You wanted to finish off with your final thought this week. So what was the, the question you wanted to throw out there? Yeah, to you and to listeners, how do you guys feel about uh, title changes? Are you more inclined to want to have them um, on pay-per-views or do you prefer every now and then having them on TV? And before I get your uh, take on it, Adam, I just want to share mine briefly. I just kind of think with the way, since we don't get so many pay-per-views like what we probably might get for this year, I think when you have a long gap of time between, like, say, for example, we had Homecoming and then we're getting uh, Rebellion towards the end of April, um, I think it's fine. Um, I know we did we did get the, uh, uh, the, um, the Lucha Brothers. They won the tag titles in Mexico. So, I mean, that was fine. But I don't mind it at all just because the way that the stuff is taped – I do feel at times some of these title rings get stale relatively quickly, you know, and it could be in part two. We don't get a whole lot of title matches, but I think it would add some sort of kind of suspense. Now, I get it, too. Like if you do them on taped episodes, you run the risk of it being spoiled. And, you know, obviously that can detract people from actually watching the show live. So I don't know. I guess you'd have to work around that, but I don't mind it. I don't I mean, obviously, I don't want to see no hot potato, but I just think when you have such a long uh, gap between pay-per-views, um, I'd love to see some title changes on uh, uh, some episodes of Impact at times. Uh, you, you Well, I think you summed up pretty much my thoughts on it as well, is that I, I think the feuds should be built towards uh, p- pay-per-views that, you know, pay-per-views should be the end of feuds. And if you go for the title, you know, that, that should be it. Um, but having said that, you know, it is a long time between pay-per-views for Impact. And I think every now and again, you know, there, there can be a title change. But don't do it on a taping, as you quite rightly said. You know, it gets spoiled. If you're going to do it, do it on a live show so that people don't know it's coming. And I know you can argue, well, right there, when Mick Foley won, you know, Bischoff read out on WCW that, you know, on WWF, you've got Mick Foley with a title. And everyone went and watched it. But, you know, it's a different era now. That, that, that was something that was happening live, you know, and he read it out to try and spoil the other program. Now, with the internet, you can read it 
as it happens almost you know so you know it's not the same era that we're living in so for me you know it being spoilt it will get out there and people aren't going to tune in and it'll, well if they do it'll be very much more diluted so yeah i think that it, it's you never really believe a title is going to change hand so for example jordine jordan versus tyre this week uh you never thought that, that title was going to change hand you know, you, uh, it's the same with uh, the title. The, you know, whenever they have a title match, you, you never feel like it, it's you know it's really going to mean anything unless it's a meaningful feud, and um, you know it's been built towards. So, yeah, for me, keep them for the pay per views. It's just you know, I guess where it just comes from because I had really thought in Vegas when they were taping in Vegas, I thought Cross was going to win the title, and what they were going to build was a Cross versus Kate at rebellion and you know we didn't get that so you know we kind of it felt like we got there three months of you know cage and johnny you know just cage chasing him and you know it i, I don't know about you know how you feel about it but it just got it it, it got boring real quick because it's kind of like to me it's like okay so we got i gotta wait all the way to rebellion for them to uh crown cage as champion you know i, I just feel sometimes that suspense factor and i do believe I th- like if you do spoil, you know, when you um, even when the Lucha Brothers uh, title change was spoiled, I think that show did well in the viewership. So, I mean, I do think it's kind of one of these things where if it's certain individuals, like if it's a, f- a favorite that a lot of people want to see win the title, they're going to go watch it versus if you put it on somebody that they don't care about, then that could kind of be like, oh, you know. Uh, no, I'm not going to tune in. So it's just it's just a weird thing. I was just wondering, like, because it just seems like a lot of these title reigns now are like super long now. And I really think with long title reigns, like it should only be for certain individuals. I don't want to see everybody having the belt for six, seven months, you know? Well, uh, one thing I think they should do, and we talked about it lots of times, the, the mid-card belt. But, um, you know, even I think it was, uh, was it Trent and J-Bone? Who, who were on the show last week, on the review show, they started talking about the TV title. And, and I love the TV, TV title. I, I think it's a great way. And it would be not made for, for Brian Cage, you know, someone to defend the title week in, week out on the show against, you know, someone coming in, whether it's on the roster or outside the roster. For me, uh, you know, they need a second title now. And then, you know, keep the big title for the pay-per-views and maybe just have, you know, the TV title cha- changing every now and again. You yeah, you know, there, there you go. That's fair. You could even do the X Division title. I think if you're talking about it like that, you know, you have some type of belt where, you know, because like you said, we get title matches now. Um, you know, we don't we don't expect the title to change. So it's just it's hard to invest. And in. I think sometimes when you can walk into a match and have that, oh, well, she might get it or he might get it like cool. Like even this past week, you know, I knew Jordan wasn't going to win. I knew she wasn't going to lose, but I knew she was going to win because obviously we got the pay-per-view. I, I, when it's getting closer to the pay-per-view, I understand. But, you know, you think about when, like, just say, for example, after uh, um, Rebellion, our next pay-per-view is until sometime in July. So, I mean, if you wanted to do one and say, like, May, the end of May or so, you could and it'd be okay. But, I, you know, I just want to, I'm interested to see people's thoughts. I mean, if you're, you know, fans of title changes on pay-per-views then that's cool maybe you're so you know like me you wouldn't mind seeing them on tv so i'm just interested to see what people think well there you go folks that's this week's show so just a reminder of the of the topics we really want to hear from you about is uh willie mack uh, i want someone to change my mind on him because uh i could just never see this guy being the top guy in the company uh so that's the first one i want to hear about your thoughts on the bischoff hogan here era was it as bad as you know, it seems that everyone seems to say it is. You know, I I enjoyed it. Uh, Bro even went as far to say that he preferred it to the current regime. Wow, I'm still I'm still reading from that one, Bro. Uh, <laughs> and then Bro just asked there about uh, title changes on TV. Would you like to uh, see them more frequently on TV or just at pay per views? So uh, the trivia question again: um, What was unusual about the tag team? Uh, title reign for the first tag team title reign for the wolves uh, that's this week's question for the trivia so thanks for tuning in leave us your comments below we'll do our best to get through them and once again thanks for all the love that you showed us and hit subscribe follow us on twitter and all that jazz all right for the time being though have a good week <laughs>